Folks, May 20th of last year, a deer in Mary's life changed drastically when an Indianola police officer, Greg Capers, shot him in the chest. At the time, he was 11 years old. The officer was responding to a domestic disturbance call. Now, it was bad enough that Capers did not face any charges related to the shooting. But guess what? Adirian's mother, Michaela, will be before a judge, folks, on child neglect charges as a result of the May incident. Yeah, seriously. Um, we're absolutely confused by all of this. I'm sure you are as well. Joining us now is Carlos Moore, the family attorney. Uh, Carlos, glad to have you here. So I'm, I'm confused. How is the mother facing neglect charges when there was a disturbance and the cops were called and her son gets shot? How was she neglecting? Roland, I'm just as confused as you are. I've been practicing law for 22 years. I've never seen such uh, absurdity in my, in my entire career. I mean, she is a perfect, outstanding mother. Uh, she has been raising these kids as a single mom for all these years with no problems. And now because a uh, reckless cop shot her son, she's, she risked losing her, her children. And so we're going to fight vehemently in court on April the 17th for her to retain custody. But it makes no sense. We believe it's retribution for her filing the lawsuit, the multi-million dollar lawsuit against the city of Indianola and the officer. It's just harassment. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this here. Go, go, guys, pull it up. It says on count one that on or about May 20th, 2023, in the county, um, per reporter, a child, Adirian Murray, got hurt because of the domestic violence between the mother, Nikayla Murray, and her boyfriend, John Nolden. On Saturday, May 20th, 2023, John jumped on Nikayla. Nikayla called her family member and they called the police. The police went over to the home. Somebody came running out of the home and the police shot. The reporter was unsure if the police thought it was John. The reporter stated that this was a result of the mother and boyfriend domestic violence that had been happening for years. John assaults the mother in front of the kids. The reporter wanted someone to check on the children because something worse can happen next time. Okay, I'm, st I, I, I'm, I'm still utterly confused by here. So, uh, so they are blaming Nikayla for being beaten? That's what it sounds like, and she was not even beaten on May 20th. Uh, she let the ex-boyfriend, the father of her daughter, in, and he was becoming more and more irate, and she knows how he gets uh, when he's fully angry. So before he could get fully angry, she threw the phone, or passed the phone to her son and told him to call the police, thinking that that would be uh, protecting the family instead of uh, escalating the situation. She had no idea the police would come in and shoot her, ch her child in the, in the chest. And so John Nolan had not hit her. He had not hit her, but she was trying to avoid him... Um, uh, becoming more irate and doing something later. Uh, so she called the police or had the police call. And, and again, I, I'm sitting here, re I'm sitting here reading this. And, 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 and the reason I'm, I'm, I'm completely confused because th they also say in count one, again, pull it up, please. They also say in count one, as they're describing what happened, they said the police went over to the home, quote, somebody came running out of the home and the police shot. Um, one, this is nuts. We actually saw the body cam footage. When the officer came into the home, he was ordering people to come out of the room. The young man, Adirian, the young boy, Adirian, he walks out. He didn't come running out. This officer reflexively fired the shot at him. We actually saw it. So who's actually saying they just came running out and the cop thought it was John? I believe it's a nosy neighbor that does not know what he or she is talking about. They were not there, uh, and clearly they did not see uh, the boyfriend, the ex-boyfriend, beating Miss um, um, Murray, so that's a lie. And so I don't know why uh, we would have a case based on somebody's allegations that was not there, not, who was not an eyewitness. Um, and so was this report, it's, it says here it was Sunflower County, and the prosecuting attorney is... Gwendolyn Jemison. So is, is this who's pursuing this? I'm just trying to understand uh, what's going on here. 
Yes, Gwendolyn Jemison is the uh, county attorney. She is the youth court prosecutor, and she is the one that is uh, prosec will prosecute this case and is pushing it. And so I believe she needs to turn back. She needs to think carefully about what she doing, what she is doing, and pursuing because this is unjust. This lady has suffered a enough, and she does not need to add insult to injury. Yeah, she's a county prosecuting attorney. Uh, um, we're on the website. And was, okay, that's her photo right there because on the website, there's no photo. Matter of fact, her photo is the only one that's not there. So it's sort of like, how you got everybody else, but you don't have her. So, um, it's, so is she the one pursuing, so like whose decision is it to pursue this? I understand from my client that Child Protective Services told her that no case would be open, and then they called her back uh, shortly thereafter, a few weeks, and said it would be open, but they were not pushing it. They, they interviewed everybody and saw that she uh, was a fit mother, so we don't know if it's the prosecutor pushing it or whoever this re alleged re reporter or uh, accuser is, if they are pushing it or what, but we're going to get down to the bottom of it, and we expect her to remain uh, the mother and to continue to have custody of her children. It's... Um, we did reach out to Gwendolyn Jemison. Uh, she did not respond to us. Um, so is so does she have a boss or is she the decider as to who pers to pursue these cases? She is an elected county prosecutor. So she um, the citizens are, are her bosses. And so they could vote her out of office if they're not pleased with her actions. All right. Call us more. We appreciate it, bro. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Roland. Uh, I want to bring in my panel right now uh, to try to make sense uh, of this. Michael Imhotep, host African History Network show out of Detroit. Matt Manning, civil rights attorney out of Corpus Christi. Kelly Bethea, communication strategist out of D.C. Um, Matt, what the hell? Yeah, this is really stupid. This is a, a prosecutor using her power the wrong way. Um, one thing I wanted to break down for the viewers very quickly, the law in Mississippi is apparently the same as here in Texas. And to take away somebody's uh, parental rights, the judge has to be shown or has to find by clear and convincing evidence that it's in, quote, the best interest of the child. The reason I tell you that is termination of parental rights is one of the civil actions, so meaning not criminal, where at least in Texas, you're entitled to the appointment of a lawyer. So these are very serious cases, obviously trying to take a, a child away from their parents, and even more than that, trying to take away the parent's right to be the child's parent legally. So that means that their, their relationship is legally severed. I tell you all of that to say, what I see very often with CPS cases, which is the same thing we call it here, a lot of times the prosecutors are motivated, motivated by the same political uh, things that motivate, you know, sometimes criminal indictments and sometimes uh, just seeking justice against people in a high profile situation. And here, this is absurd. The idea that there's nothing tying the mother and the mother's neglected, uh, alleged neglect in this situation to her son is stupid, especially because what they usually do in these cases is they investigate whether the claims by the reporter are actually true. And it sounds like Attorney Moore was saying, Whomever reported this got the date wrong, got the information wrong. So the grounds on which the judge could terminate her rights uh, doesn't sound like there's an evidentiary basis. But the biggest part of this is that clear and convincing evidence sits between what you need to prove a car wreck and what you need to prove somebody guilty of a criminal offense. It's a very high burden. And for them to even bring this case makes no sense because normally what CPS does is they'll do what's called a safety plan. They'll institute a safety plan to make sure the child is safe, that the parents are taking whatever remedial actions they think are appropriate. They don't jump all the way to trying to take a child away <clears throat> from a parent who, whom they've had no prior contact with. And what I thought he said was especially important in this case is CPS is the, the agency that determines whether the child is safe or unsafe, right? But the prosecutor is the one to whom they bring the evidence. So generally, if CPS is saying, we don't think there's a case here, the prosecutors don't go forward with the case. So it makes me wonder whether this prosecutor has some reason to be advancing a case that the agency itself doesn't think should be advanced, because that's not normally what you see. But the bigger issue is this woman's child was shot, and the whole world now knows her son was shot. Um, it doesn't make any sense to try to then, you know, die on this hill where you take away her parental rights, which are among the most important rights you get as a person legally, right? The right to legally have a relationship with and parent your child. So I don't know how she thinks she's advancing any cause of justice with this. And I would hope that um, someone in her office counsels her to let this case go. Uh, I, I'm just sitting here, <laughs> Kelly, absolutely confused. 
and how you can read this count and they blame the mother saying the mother is putting the child in harm's way because of the actions of this man. I mean, the domestic, I mean, we, we know the reality, the history of domestic violence. We know women that have stayed with boyfriends or spouses who have been the victims of domestic violence. So you, you blame her, not him? I mean, <clears throat> I wouldn't blame anybody in this situation per se, except the cop that shot the the eleven year old boy, because the cop is the one who presented the danger. As if I recall correctly, based off of what I just heard from um, counsel from the counselor, as well as what I've read, she was being proactive in calling the police to protect her child from this man who had yet to do anything, but because he had a history of it, she was being proactive in ensuring the safety of her child. And the person who is, whose job is to also ensure the safety of citizens actually endangered the safety of that child. In, in fact, he jeopardized it by shooting the 11-year-old boy. So that <clears throat> in and of itself is bad policy on behalf of the of the uh, prosecuting attorney because it sets bad precedent. What does it say about the office that they are going to try and strip away the parental rights of a woman who, by all accounts, was doing what she was told what is, is what she was supposed to be doing in situations like this. You call the cops before things get out of hand. You follow commands. You abide by what's happening. Uh, by all accounts, the family did that. Yet and still, this little boy almost died because of an extension of the, the attorney's office being law enforcement. So it, it's, it's more um, aggravating than it is confusing because it just seems like a bad policy precedent to, to uh, accuse and basically demonize the mother for something that a police officer did. Michael, I, 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 I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here like flabbergasted uh, at this uh, in terms of what happened here. And I'm just sitting here going, okay, you're so this makes no sense. And, and I still go back to the shooting. I don't know how in right. the hell nothing happened with this officer. We saw it. He is ordering people out of the room. And the moment he sees this boy, boom. Right. I still don't, I, I still don't know how this guy does not, hell, d d just doesn't get, not, even if he doesn't get prosecuted, I wouldn't want that cop with a gun with right. what happened there. Well, first of all, this was a crazy case, and we've talked to attorney Carlos Moore a number of times on this case. Um, so thanks, thanks to him for coming back on. Thanks to you, Roland, for continuing to shine a light on this case. Um, and we saw the uh, uh, the body cam footage uh, last time he was on. And uh, a Darian Murray was following police commands to come out. And he comes around the corner. He's in the house. He, co he comes around the corner and gets shot. OK, so we're still trying to figure out why was he shot? What happened there? Uh, so it was definitely uh, recklessness uh, by uh, the police officer. But now to file a lawsuit claiming that the mother put the son in uh, harm's way and the petition says the witness, this unnamed witness, who says that um, the, uh, the the boyfriend, uh, the former boyfriend, because they, they're not in a relationship now, the former boyfriend uh, had been, had been uh, beating her for years. Uh, ex-boyfriend John Nolden, um, to say that the shooting of a Darian Murray was as a result of that, as opposed to the result of a reckless police officer, is still strange enough. Uh, it's, it's, it's strange. It's even stranger. Um, I would want to know who this unnamed witness is, and I want to see that unnamed witness cross-examined as well, because some, something is wrong here. And it very well could be retaliation for the $5 million lawsuit that the mother has filed against the city of Indiana, Indiana, uh, Indianola, uh, Mississippi. So more crazy things happen in this case. So we'll have to see uh, how this uh, turns uh, out. But the, yeah. but the other thing, lastly, was John Nolden ever arrested for assaulting uh, the mother? 
Um, not to my knowledge. So, but it goes to show you how crazy this is. So, uh, this prosecutor, Gwendolyn Jemison, you got some answering uh, to do. So, uh, we will uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully this this does not uh, move uh, forward. Our fan base is pioneering a new era of social media for the creator economy. This next generation social media app with over 600,000 users is raising $17 million and now is your chance to invest. For details on how to invest, visit startengine.com slash fanbase or scan the QR code. Another way we're giving you the freedom to be you without limits.